Hey Rap Bags, it's Jay. Today I'm guiding you through realms and portals. Pretty much all the different realms that you can curate with the major and the biome cards. The mechanics of crafting the cards, but not a fully in-depth tutorial for some of it, as it's still a preview. Some things may still change between now and the full game's release. But yeah, how to open your portals, everything you need to know about resetting them, how to make them public, and some other stuff. So the cards, the minor ones you get as rewards for completing certain encounters, finding them in chess or buying them from essence traders. The major and biome cards you will have to buy from these traders. Or if you follow in tutorial, completing certain power towers basically where they'll give you one as a reward as part of the tutorial guide. So once you've got these recipes then you can go ahead and craft them at an enchanter's focus. This is where you craft your charms, infusions and enhancements too. Now every card has pretty much the same materials that you make in the early days, it's just paper and ink, but as you progress some of the more advanced realm cards, particularly like the biomes and majors, they're going to require more advanced materials like these. Abeyance, Antiquarian, as well as the Astrolabe and Provisioner cards all use the same materials, regular paper and ink. To make the ink you're going to need glass that you get from quartz or any other kind of crystals like that or gemstones and then you will need ink which you can make from any plant matter. Glass is made at a simple smelter and the ink is made at a mortar's bench too. These are all the cards that you can unlock utilizing the just regular simple enchanters focus. So lots and lots of minor cards. Like I mentioned earlier, you do find cards out in the world as loot in chess, maybe obviously buying from essence traders or completing encounters. Enchantments Focus does have four slots, so if you found recipes for cards, you might not be able to craft them until you've added the correct augments, FYI. So once you've made your cards, you can go ahead and place them in the portal. No enemies are going to pop out of these small ones, so you can make a lovely little portal room like we did, or an area. The larger Fey ones, some enemies may come out while you're waiting for one to open. If you open up two portals and play exactly the same cards, they'll lead to exactly the same spot. There is a way to reset a realm. Obviously it's procedure generated all of these realms, so things will change in terms of where the points of interest are and essence traders. For example, I was trying to get to an essence trader, but there's a bug at the moment with one of the late game ones, it had the wrong trader, so I figure I will reset it. What you have to do is close the portal down that you're already working on, buy new cards or get new cards, craft them, play them, and then you can choose the box to go ahead and reset that realm. So it resets all of the interactions, all the encounters, so you can go back and just earn even more of the essence if you really want, and also if you want to change difficulty. You can see you can change difficulty from easy to extreme, and in between you've got medium and hard. For example, a level 100 card, the ascended ones, if you put that as easy, it drops it back down to 60. So that's the type of enemies you'll face, level 60. If you put it on extreme, I think it was something like 220, 240. The higher the difficulty, the more of essence you're going to get for that particular realm. So whether or not you're killing creatures, harvesting or completing quests and interactions, had it on easy, I was only getting around five essence for each of the encounters I was completing, where normally you get about 15 for a medium. But then numbers can fluctuate a little bit depending on what one you're doing. So I've seen some people being confused about opening and closing them. Basically you've got open or reopen. That means you can go back to that portal, to that realm whenever you want. You don't have to keep crafting new cards and playing them. But if you do click close portal instead of reopen portal, then it will absolutely use up them cards and you have to craft new ones to go back, even if it's to the same realm that you've been before. And yes, you can make a realm public, which means anyone can come and join that realm. So I highly advise you, don't ever do that for your own abeyance realm. Make sure it's always for just a realm that you might want to encounter some other players that maybe help you out randomly. You don't need to set a realm to public if you want to invite your friends into your realm to go and play them. They'll just simply join in with you. It'll give you another recap of what to expect from that realm now that you've mixed the two cards together, whether it's Apex Creature and what potential creatures there'll be. And that is pretty much it. Remember, the minor cards don't get played here anymore. I think in one previous playtest they were. Instead, you'll be doing them at a transmuter, an item that you can craft and place in any realm, or some that you find out in the world. They can be found individually on their own, or sometimes, or most times in fact, on top of a Fey Tower. So don't panic if your realm closes. You often will find that if you log off, log in, or just go and do something for a few minutes, sometimes they will just shut down on their own. But you just simply click reopen. 
If a player is already exploring that realm, you don't have to panic either. They'll just simply be able to come back via clicking on the map and return into a spite realm. And yeah, if you have two portals going literally with the same exact cards made by the same player or not, as long as they're both being made and placed on your realm or that realm, they will lead to the same spot. Sadly, no teleporting, not like in Minecraft with the Never. That might take you a bit further on the overworld when exploring the underworld. Okay, so moving on to the major cards themselves. Pretty standard and obvious, desert is going to be a desert environment. Swamp, swampy filled with water, and then you've got the forest. There are more biomes coming during early access, but these are the three biome cards. After that, you're increasing the difficulty by about 10 for each realm. The first one you start off with is the abeyance. Obviously, that's your home. It's where you're going to be chilling and making maybe a nice, comfy place to live. But you can set any realm as your respite realm, but you will have to deal with more difficult creatures and stuff if you do that. Then you've got the Antiquarium, which is level 20. After this is the Astrolabe, and each one of these will have different types of ruins from now on. So the Astrolabe have certain ruins that are based around airship, and so you might come across big huge hangars and maybe even see airships in the sky. Astrolabe is level 30. Provisional card, this is a realm power of level 40. We find more ruins based around industrialization. There's lots of chimneys and brick buildings. So they're all the realms that you can craft with this simple Enchanter's Focus. To get more, you're going to have to craft the refined Enchanter's Focus. And again, I'm going to repeat it just in case. Some of these crafting benches, in fact, most of them, you do have to buy from Essence Traders, or you might get really lucky and receive one for completing a certain task. The tutorial guides you through the first stages to unlock the simple Enchanter's Focus, so I shouldn't really need to explain that. But some of the components that you'll need to make the refined one, you probably will need a lot of the other refined benches as well to go ahead and craft and unlock some of the stuff for it. Like you will need the brazier if you want to craft the refined bench. So it basically stops you from rushing off through to end game just by focusing only on Enchanter's focus. Next up is the Barbarian cards. There'll be a lot more plant life in these lands, but it is the next step up at level 50. You'll need vibrant ink, coated paper this time to craft the herbarian gloom and hunt cards the gloom is level 60 and it will be darker and certainly more dangerous with a lot of nighttime enemies maybe roaming around hunt is level 70 there'll definitely be a lot more predators roaming around in packs and stuff and then after that well you need to head over to the watch but quite honestly the cards after this are really mid to late game you won't be getting there for at least maybe 30 to 40 hours. But, because it is a tutorial, I am going to give you a brief look at it. So you will need an excellent Enchanter's Focus. This opens up the Ascended level of cards. And these are basically a version of everything you've already crafted. Antiquarian, Astrolab, Herbarium, Gloom, Hunt, Provisioner. And to craft these cards, you will need next upgrades in ink and paper, but you'll also need tools. So don't get rid of any of your basic tools. Keep at least one or two because they're better used for this. So you will need hammers, sickles, axes, pickaxes, even the spy glasses. So do keep them, honestly, don't dismantle them. Just get some quick essence dust. They'll be much better use for later. And again, if you want to craft these, you are going to have to unlock lots of the tier three crafting benches because you'll need them resources to make some of this upgraded stuff. And it's the same process, rinse and repeat. You have to go to certain biomes to unlock the next realm card. All the ascended realms are gonna be level 100 if you're playing on medium. It's quite dangerous areas, but this is where you'll get that purple tier three essence. And I think I may have forgotten to mention it, but yes, tier two essence you'll get from the hunt, the gloom and the Hibarian realms. And then tier 1 essence you'll get from the Antiquarium, the Provisioner, as well as the Astrolabe. And that is pretty much the loop of exploring, travelling through the realms, unlocking brand new environments to gather new resources, take on new dangers. So absolutely great idea to set up a proper portal room or area. But you'll also quickly get into the habit of having lots of the resources to craft the cards. And so you might not necessarily have to build all of these. If you just want to keep things nice and compact, you can just keep using one or two portals to chop and change as and when you want. And maybe last but least, there is some endgame content that you can do pretty much in a public sort of setting. You'll go there, you'll go through something and you'll take on the vaults, which are already shown off on the channel. So go and check that out. 
But if you don't want to do it, you really don't want to play with others at all, even in that setting, there is a way to do it. You'll be able to gain access to these vaults at your own portal, but you will need to craft the special vault card for it. And this will mean that you'll just do it completely on your own with no one actually in that challenge realm. You will come across fey portals out in the wild, not just these large ones, but small mini ones. They lead to pretty much challenges or vaults, mini vaults in the realms themselves. Always a good idea to complete them as they give you a ton of essence. And whenever you want to go home, you just click on the map and travel to respite. You can absolutely piggyback and just set up a chain that you build one portal in your Abiance, you go to the Antiquarian, and then you set up the next one to go to the Astrolabe in that next realm. And then from the Astrolabe realm, you go to the next one. And that could be something you want to do as a separate challenge. You got any more questions, throw them my way, and I'll try and answer them as best I can, hopefully long as you've watched the whole of this video. I have got tons more content incoming. As always, I'll see you at Bags for more soon.